Good morning, we're Jacob and Denny, and we have arrived in Copenhagen, Denmark. And today we are hungry. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> we are going to find all of the best foods to eat here in Copenhagen. Oh, it's going to be quite an adventure finding all of the great food that this city has to offer. Let's go. Copenhagen has long been known as a great food city, but starting in 2003, it was really put on the map by the opening of the restaurant Noma, which is still considered by many to be the best restaurant in the world. But However... <laughs> <laughs> you have to make reservations there months in advance, and it can cost almost $1,000 for two people to eat there. That's yeah. just not, not our style budget. or budget, <laughs> yeah. Um, so what we're doing today is finding a more approachable way of eating with uh, some snacks and goodies that are in a lower price range that we can actually afford. So our first stop today is to get breakfast. Uh, one of the typical dishes in Denmark for breakfast is porridge. Uh, basically like an oat, like oatmeal, pretty similar. Uh, but here at Grod in Copenhagen, they have stepped it up a notch. Uh, you can get it with a whole bunch of toppings. We just got caramel, fresh apples, and almonds. It looks good. It's nice and warm. This would probably be really good on a cold Danish morning. Mm. Mm. Oh, the porridge is so creamy. It's like... And then the, the apples and the almonds give it that extra crunch. The caramel gives it just that sweetness, silky sweetness throughout. It's real nice. I like the freshness from the apples. I feel like I'm eating just a, uh, a candy apple in a thing of oatmeal. It's delicious. So our next stop here is the gasoline grill for burgers. And you might not think Copenhagen for burgers, but these burgers are supposed to be incredible. Um, we've heard about it in a few other places and we couldn't pass up the opportunity to try it. So one thing I forgot to mention is that this place is also still a fully operational gas station. So you can get your gas, you can get a burger. What convenience. So we opted for the cheeseburger. There are a few other options. I think there's also a vegetarian burger if you know if you want to keep it lighter. Mm. That was very, very good. Ooh, it's a nice balance of the nice juicy burger with the like tanginess of pickles and there's some sort of like creamy sauce on it that just complements it all really really well. So if you're gonna come here to Gasoline Grill, which I highly recommend you do, make sure you get here early. Uh, they basically are open until they sell out every single day. We tried to come earlier in the week for dinner around 7, maybe 8 o'clock and they had already shut up, shut down for the day. Um, so if you want this, make sure you get here before they sell out. So we finally are trying a dessert food. This is a raspberry tart that we've seen around town. Um, it does seem that they come in all different kind of varieties. We had seen some that looked more like raspberry pop tarts. But this one is more of like a dense cake and it has some like frosting glaze and is raspberry. So I'm excited to finally try dessert. Ooh. The raspberry is very tangy in it, which, mm, yum. It is very sweet though. <laughs> the icing layer is just pure sugar. And the um, cake layers are kind of crisp. It was really, really good. Would be really good with some coffee, some black coffee to kind of balance out the sugar. Unfortunately, I don't have any right now, but if you're looking to try this, I recommend black coffee or maybe some tea. So we are taking a break from eating to come to Tivoli Garden, which is one of the most iconic amusement parks, I would probably say, in the world. You ready? <laughs> 
So we are on the Wooden Roller Coaster, which is one of the oldest roller coasters in the world. That's just his name, the Wooden Roller Coaster. I'm pretty excited to go on such a historic ride. The uh, ride is also operated by some, somebody operating the brake right behind us on this ride. Yeah, it's a little one manual. One of the uh, few rides in the world that is still operated that way. <laughs> and get a snack and what better fair food is there than a hot dog. Um, the classic hot dogs here are, well there's actually two different kind of hot dogs. There's the Danish hot dog which is kind of what we think is a normal hot dog and then there's a French hot dog that's stuffed and we just stuck with the normal Danish hot dog. Um, so it comes with a red sausage and has onions, crispy onions, pickles, ramelade, mayonnaise, and ketchup, I think. Um, maybe mustard, too, also. And then the sausage we got is the red sausage, which I have never actually seen before in person, so it'll be the first time trying it. <laughs> it tastes like your standard. What I would consider like a standard American hot dog almost. Maybe like a beef hot dog with um, just some really nice toppings. I really like the ramen they use here. We, something we don't really have for hot dogs in the United States. Just a nice creaminess with a little bit of tang. We took a little break after our food and got a beer. Uh, what better way to just sit and enjoy the beautiful weather and with a nice Carlsberg beer. Their logo is actually probably the best beer in the world, which I think is pretty hilarious. Uh, but we learned a little bit about the creator of Carlsberg at some of the museums we went to, and he was obsessed with the quality of the beer. He actually created a uh, Carlsberg Institute that studied the chemistry and everything behind how to make the best beer. And they actually invented the pH scale for measuring acidity and isolated the yeast that is still used to make lagers. So, pretty amazing guy. And pretty amazing beer. Probably. Probably. <laughs> <laughs> Market. It's definitely a good way to get a variety of different foods here. So we got fish cakes and tacos. I'm gonna start off with the fish cake. Oh, it's cold. I wonder if it's supposed <laughs> to be warmed up. Mm, I don't know, we'll see. Mm. Ooh, it's tasty. I like the fish flavor. So I don't know if it's supposed to be warm, if it's like something that you're supposed to take home and warm up, or if you're just supposed to eat it on the go, cold the way it comes. Um, either way, it's very good. It's nice and like, not too fishy, but has like a, a subtle fish taste. It's all fried on the outside and just nice and greasy. And, ooh. Just a solid little snack. You might not think tacos are food you know, here in Denmark because it's not very close to Mexico. But there is a local chef 
who uh, came from Noma, who set up the taco stand here. And so it's definitely worth trying here to get a taste of some of that new Nordic cuisine. There is a pork and egg and a cabbage, which are actually some, like the egg and the cabbage are a little bit unusual flavors. And we also saw them making the tortillas right behind the counter, which is incredible. So I'm very excited to try this. So you just need to spray a little bit of wine. I'm gonna go for this egg one first. Very runny egg and the, whatever this salsa on is very, very good. Very tangy. I'm gonna try the cabbage one, which I wasn't so sure about. There's not really like a, a meat of it. I wasn't sure how this would be. It looks like a ton of veggies, just like cabbage and maybe some little peppers on it or in like some sauce. The flavor profile is not bad, it's just I feel like it could use a little bit of uh, a meat or something in here. The last taco we had is a pork taco. It looks really simple, just some pork and some pickled cabbage. We added a little bit of lime to it. That's solid. That is a very tender, fatty, a little bit sweet. That is a great pork taco. I love that melts in your mouth pork. That is delicious. Incredible. <laughs> So good morning again. We couldn't finish all the food we wanted to try in one day, so we'll be finishing up all of the food that we wanted to try on our last day here in Copenhagen. So obviously one thing you have to get is a Danish, but they don't call them Danishes here. Well, we call them Danishes because we think they come from Denmark. Uh, they're actually here known as Vienna Brod, which is basically bread from Vienna, and that comes from uh, the bakers from, Aust from Vienna, Austria came here and brought these uh, pastries from Austria to here. And I got the, what I think we normally consider as the stereotypical Danish. Uh, kind of a flaky crust with a dollop of, um, this one has custard in the middle, but I think you can get them with a lot of different things. Oh, I didn't get to the custard yet. Mmm, but the bread is nice and flaky. Oh, it's like, mmm. It's like as flaky as a croissant, pretty much. Um, the white frosting on here is oh so sweet, but has a nice pairing with the kind of flaky crust. Mmm, oh. That custard is so rich in the center. Oh man. Just the creamy richness with the flaky crust is oh so perfect. This is a great way to start the day. I am very happy with this choice. So mine is a pastry with almond and powdered sugar. Hmm. Oh, that's good. Oh, the flakiness is just mm, so good. Um, it's almost like almost like a beignet in New Orleans, where it's kind of or a churro maybe. It's got the kind of fried outside with just a nice fluffy inside, and the sweetness of the powdered sugar and the almond flavor just give it that nice extra little zing to it. For lunch we came to the botanical gardens with a little picnic and um, we're enjoying the beautiful beautiful weather. Mm -hmm. So one of the I would say the most essential things to eat here while you're in Denmark is Svobrod. It's an open face sandwich with lots and lots of toppings on it. The bread is a rye bread and then there's usually some sort of butter or even lard sometimes on top and then they put all of your toppings. We got some of the more traditional flavored ones. So it usually starts with herring and ooh, 
The herring looks really nice in here. You can just see how flaky it is. This is marinated herring. Um, so you can get herring in a few different ways. Marinated, curried, salted, smoked. Um, they really enjoy herring here. It comes straight out of the ocean nearby. Very nice. I've come to like rye bread quite a bit on this trip, I think. Um, I don't know how to describe it. It's just a real nice dense bed for the sandwich. And then you have the firmness of the fish. Oh, that slight seafood taste, but not too much. And then the kind of the cream a sauce and the dill on top. So not only does it look beautiful, it just tastes the same. The next piece of small road that we got was salmon and it is it looks almost too pretty to eat. It's beautiful. Um, so it's we got some salmon on the bottom and some greens and there's some sort of crunchy brown thing and little dollops of this really pretty green sauce. I'm hoping the sauce isn't like wasabi or horseradish tasting though, because that could be pretty intense. And one thing that they recommended when we went to the Schmobrod restaurant the other day was to try to get everything all in one bite. So I'm going to try that as best as I can. This one is so good. I love salmon. So this one is just really, really good. There's some sort of like smokiness on it too and there's just like a nice cream that green sauce i think it's just kind of like a mayonnaise or aioli or something like that so it's really just creamy and rich and just really really good i'm a huge fan of this one when you eat schmorbrod you're actually supposed to eat akavit or what is also known as schnapps from what we're used to and the intent of that is uh, it's such a rich creamy food around here that you need that uh, strong alcohol to kind of wake up your tongue a little bit and be able to really taste the flavors or else it just becomes numb to all of those deep rich creamy flavors um, unfortunately here while we're picnicking we don't have the option to just order a little shot of akavit uh, but it would be really nice to enjoy with this meal the last type of schmobrod we got is the dessert one which is cheese with some jam and some nuts we don't really eat cheese in the united states as a dessert but i know it's more of a thing here in europe that's an amazing cheese I love like a harder nutty cheese and that is exactly what that is. And with just like a little bit of a sweet but not too sweet jam on it and a little bit of crunch from the nuts on there, that's incredible. So our last food here, we couldn't uh, come to a new country without trying their candy. So we have some what I think are licorice straws. I know that licorice is pretty popular here in Scandinavia in general, and we found this brand of Tom's candy that seems to be pretty much in every grocery store, convenience store, so we thought we'd give it a try. The first one I'm gonna try looks like a pretty traditional licorice stick um, with the, the licorice twist and the black licorice is the typical flavor of licorice here. So we'll see how this tastes. Mm -hmm. mm. That tastes like black licorice. <laughs> I'm not really that big of a fan of black licorice. I'm very, I don't know not bitter or sweet and I don't know it doesn't really taste like what I think of candy maybe Jacob will like this more than I do so we got the classic mix uh, there was a few different sets of five um, we don't know what all the flavors are but we figured the classic was the way to go so right now I'm gonna try this one that's kind of yellow on the outside and has a black in the middle. The black in the middle is probably the black licorice, um, but we'll see. Lemon? Hmm. Yeah. So I think it's kind of a lemon, a soft lemon kind of candy around a core of licorice. Um, it's 
a good kind of mix together. It took me a while to even figure out it was lemon though. Um, it's not amazing, but it goes well together. It's not too bad. I'll probably finish it. Please tell us if there are some foods that we missed because I'm sure there are many that we didn't get to try. We've only been here about a week, so right. we didn't get too much of an Sadly, opportunity Sadly, we can't to try get everything. Everything, right. So let us know if there's something that is better or worse, something that you personally like mm -hmm. from Denmark. All right, thank you for watching. Bye.